Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem design browser history. We're given a single browser tab and we want to basically simulate the behavior of navigating between browser pages. We know that a page is represented with a URL and we will be having some starting home page for us that will be provided to us. And we'll take care of that in the constructor. Now there's three main operations that we want to support. One is pretty simple we want to visit a particular url of course you can do that with a browser so suppose that a is our home page then we can visit another page let's say b is the page that's provided then we end up on a second page now the interesting thing here is that we have two more operations where we can move back and we can move forward in the browser history, similar to how you can do it with a real browser. We know that if we navigated from A to B, we can always move backwards. And if we do that, we end up at this page, at the previous page. And if we do that, we can also move forward in the browser history. And then maybe after we move forward, we can navigate to a new page like C. And just to clarify, the back and forward operations are not just done by moving one one step. Suppose we're at B, we can move one step and go to C. And then from C, we can move one step and go to B. But we could also, being at C, we can move two spots back to A. We can move an arbitrary number of steps, uh, either backwards or forward. A couple quick edge cases. Imagine we are at C, and the number of steps provided for us to move backwards is two, while well, we would move to A. But what happens if the value is three? What happens if we try to move three steps backwards? Well, we end up nowhere. We end up out of bounds. So if we're given a value that's too large, then we just move as much as we can. We tried to move three spots, but we couldn't, so we just moved two spots instead and got back to the beginning. That's pretty simple. And the same thing would happen if we were at A and we wanted to move three spots forward. Well, we'd be out of bounds, so instead we just move as much as we can. We move two spots and then end up at C. So I think that's not too complicated. Now there's one last edge case. Well, not really edge case. It's more about the main behavior of the visit operation. Suppose we are at position A. We're at this page. We know we have our portion of forward history, but what happens if from here we try to move to a different page like D. Well, then we end up at D. Now we should be able to move backwards to A, which we can, but we can't really move forward anymore because this was kind of a different branch of our history. We can't really go back here. And just like in a real browser, we want this to simulate that. So what happens is all of the forward history at this point when we visited a new page is cleared. So all of this is gone. And that's pretty much the main behavior that we're going for with this problem. Now, there are two main ways of solving solving this problem. One is kind of like I'm showing with a linked list, because as you can tell, we want to be able to move in both directions. So we want to be able to move forward, which you can with a singly linked list, but we also want to be able to move backwards, which you can with a doubly linked list. So that's how I'm going to be implementing this solution. It's pretty rare that we get to use a doubly linked list. So I think now's a good opportunity to do so. But I want to mention that we can also solve this problem with a stack or a dynamic array. And I'll touch upon that at the end. That's actually the more efficient way to solve this problem. And very quickly, I want to mention what would the time complexity be for each of these operations if we did it with a linked list? Well, how exactly would we implement each of them? As you could tell, the visit operation is pretty much always going to be constant time because no matter where we're at, whether we're all the way at the beginning of our history or at the end, it doesn't matter because we're visiting a page. Anytime we visit a page, all we really have to do is say, okay, the next number node after this current node that I'm at is going to be whatever the new page happens to be. In this case, maybe it's D. That's always going to be easy. Now, the less efficient operations are going to be these two where we have to move backwards or forwards. With a linked list, we can't just index a random position like we can with an array. That's the downside of this approach because if we want to move backwards or forwards, depending on the number of steps, this could be arbitrarily long. So this is an O of N time operation where N is the size 
of the doubly linked list because we might have to traverse the entire list. If we were to implement this with an array, we would actually be able to get each of these operations down to constant time, which I'll show you at the end. Okay, so now let's code it up. The first thing I wanna do is create a linked list node class. So I'm gonna create a class called list node. It's going to have three fields, a value, which is gonna be the string for the URL that we're currently at. We're also gonna have two pointers, a next pointer. Well, this is the previous pointer and a next pointer. And by default, these two pointers are going to be set to null. So now to initialize our browser history, I'm going to create a current pointer for whatever current page we happen to be at. I'm going to create a list node. I'm gonna pass in the home page as the value, and I'm not gonna pass anything in for the previous or next node because that can just be set to null. Now let's move on to visit, which is pretty straightforward. What we want to do is create a new list node for this URL that we're given we're going to just pass in the URL. And before I get to the previous and next pointers, what are we doing with this node? Well, we know we're currently at self.cur. We know our current node is not gonna be null because we did initialize it with a home page. And we know that whenever we move back, we're never gonna go out of bounds. So we can pretty much assume that our current pointer is never going to be null. So what we're gonna do is say our next pointer for current is now going to point at this new node that we just created it. So what we can say is that our next pointer is going to point at whatever new node that we just created is. Since we are creating a doubly linked list, we also want this new node to point back at the current node. So we want the previous pointer of this new node to point at cur. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna say previous should be self.cur. And I'm not gonna pass anything in for the next pointer because it just needs to be null anyway, because this new list node is going to be the last node in our linked list now. Also, since this is the last node and this is also the current node, we can set self.cur equal to self.cur.next. So not too bad there. Now we also have the back operation. So why while our current pointer is non-null and steps is greater than zero, we want to set self.cur equal to self.cur.previous because we're moving backwards this many steps. We should also decrement the number of steps. So we're gonna keep moving backward as much as we can until we've either moved back this many steps or we somehow ended up out of bounds. But remember, we never want to end up out of bounds. Instead of letting self.cur somehow equal null, we should instead say while self.cur.previous is non-null. This way we will end up stopping as soon as we reach the last node. If we see that the previous node is null, that means we reached the last node that we could move to, or at least the first node since we're moving backwards. And once that is done, we want to return self.cur.val. This part kind of tripped me up because I forgot we actually had to return a value here, but we do, we have to return the value that we ended up moving backwards to. The forward operation, thankfully, is pretty much the exact same as this, except we're gonna be moving in the other direction. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this. And instead of looking at the previous node, we'll be looking at the next node and steps will still be decremented by one, but instead of moving backwards, we're gonna be moving forward and that is pretty much it. So now let's run the code to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes it does, and it is pretty efficient, beating 69%. There's actually a more efficient solution. Let me quickly show that to you. I mentioned that there's a solution using an array, and this is that solution. We're actually using an array slash a stack. So we don't need a linked list. Our self.history is going to be equal to an array with just a single value, which is the home page initially. We also have two pointers. One I'm calling I, but you could consider it our current pointer, the same as we had for our previous solution. So this is gonna be pointing at the current page that we're currently at. We also have a variable to maintain the current length. The reason I have a separate variable for this and we can't just take the length of our current array is because this pointer is actually going to be the true length or at least the length that we consider to be the real length. We don't consider the length of this array and you'll see what I mean in just a second. Now, I'm gonna start with the back and forward operations first because they're actually more simple. Of course, if we have an array and we want to move back 
backward this many steps, we don't have to shift a pointer because with arrays, we can just calculate the new position. We know that I is our current position. So if we take I and subtract the number of steps, we will have the new index. But the problem is this could be out of bounds. So what we need to do is have an if statement to make sure that this is not less than zero. Now, an easier way to do that is to just take the maximum of whatever this happens to be. Maybe it's bigger than zero or maybe it's less than zero. If it's less than zero, this equation, this operation will be set to zero. If this is greater than zero, self.i will be set to whatever value this happens to be. And then we just take that pointer and return self.history. Notice how moving backwards does not change the length of our array because moving backwards does not delete anything. Same as moving forward. We do not delete anything. We're doing pretty much the same thing, self.i, except we're adding the number of steps. And instead of taking the maximum, we're taking the minimum because we don't want this value to go out of bounds in the other direction. We don't want this to be greater than self.length minus one. This is our length variable. I'm not taking the length of history. You'll see why I'm doing that when we look at the visit operation above. In summary, this forward operation is almost exactly the same as the backwards operation. Now, this is where the actual complexity comes from. Well, there's not much complexity, but these both were constant time operations. Clearly, we're just indexing an array, and this is the same thing. Clearly, we just have a couple conditionals, and we are just you know doing basic operations and indexing an array or appending to an array. All of these are constant constant time operations. But what are we doing here? Well, remember, when we visit a URL, we're pretty much erasing the forward history. But if we actually manually erase the forward history, like we pop every value from this self.history stack or array, we could do that. But the problem is that that would end up being an O of n time operation. We actually don't need to do that. We don't need to delete those values. We can sort of soft delete them. What I mean is, first, we know we need to add this URL to the next position. By next position, I mean the index i plus one. So that's what we're going to do. We can only do that if that position has already been filled before, because otherwise we're going to get an index out of bounds error. So I first make sure that the array self.history is long enough. Initially, it won't be long enough to insert at the index one position. So we have to make sure that it is. And if it is, then we do this. Otherwise, we append. We can't just index uh, this because we'll get out of bounds error. But that's pretty much it. And then once we do that, all we have to do is increment our i pointer because we're now at the next position. And we set our length equal to i plus 1. That's just kind of how you know math works for arrays that are indexed uh, starting at 0. And that's pretty much it. The reason we're then updating our self.length is because of this forward operation. Basically, when we set this equal to i plus one, before that, it will probably be equal to some bigger value. Before that, it may be equal to an even larger value. Like for example, if we have some values, one, two, three, and four, but our current position happens to be over here at a two, then and we want to insert a new value, something like five maybe, then we'll insert that five over here. At the same time, we want this forward history to be deleted. Instead of manually deleting it, we'll just be updating a pointer instead so that we consider this value to no longer be there even though it is taking up memory still. So that's basically how we can get this to be the most optimal solution. I admit that this code might not be super easy to understand especially if you're a beginner. And that's because I'm kind of using some tricks that you might not be used to yet. It's okay if you have to kind of write out longer code, you have to write out some if statements here and here. And maybe even the first time you solve this problem, you do have to write it a less efficient way or a different way, or maybe you just have some bugs, that's okay. But I did want to show you the most optimal solution. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you'd like to see the code in a language other than Python, you can check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.